This is going to be, hey, with the compression on here, I think it sounds pretty radio voicey. Here we are on 1973 FM. Is you don't have to first start to get more familiar with that grace note. What I want you to do is just think of a, forget about a shuffle for a minute. Let's just play some time for a minute. Okay, watch this. You know, I do want to deaden this a little more though. Black or light. Tone, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hopefully. Oh, there we go. Okay. Well, there we go. Is, think of just a straight 4-4 four, four beat. Eighth notes on the hat. Okay, here we go. All right, let's do this. Let's make those 16s. I'm going to move the microphone just a smidgey wedge, okay? Because I... Maybe hi there. All right. But so here we go. Remember, we went from... To... Now, what I want you to do, you, is you're going to switch that left hand from the hat to the snare. Now what's happening there is you're acquainting the left hand with just the, the physical realm of where it's going to be in the shuffle. This stick is now defective. It, it has reached its lifetime, its useful life. You're, the, the hand in the shuffle will be in this region, in the snare region, okay? This nether region of snare drum. But instead of kind of worrying about the slightly more complicated shuffle, like three notes, right? You're just going to do the straight up 16, like I said. So what we're going to do is you practice that for a while. And even for drummers who are pretty skilled but really don't have a lot of skill with the shuffle, this is a really good primer or a basic building block. Do you know what I mean? Like in basketball, I used to always say it's like in basketball, which I'm horrible at. But, you know, you do all those different, you know, obviously you'll practice free throws because you will do free throws in a game, right? You'll practice layups because you will do layups. You'll practice, you know, running past folks and seeing the ball because you will do that. But there's a, some exercise, ziz, where like they used to do a thing where you'd like you'd, you'd practice jumping up and down and bouncing the ball off the wall or the backboard just like practicing your rebounds getting used to timing your jump now there's never going to come a time in a game where you're actually going to do that like more than once and it's usually not you that's going to be tossing the ball up there you might not actually ever play a song where you go oh that's a really cool beat and a band a chicago band here called the zero stars used that in a song they had but we're going to make a modification. What we're going to do is we're going to have that left hand now, we're going to slow it way down, play the snare note. So instead of the right hand going over, going, that left hand's going to play it. But this is going to require the left hand to get its act kind of together and do a little double duty here, okay? So instead of slowing it down, we're gonna go like this. Okay, do you see that? And that's actually a good pattern for you to think of. Think of it like a song. Okay, that's a really good way of sort of getting it in your brain musically instead of it just being sort of like a rote physical exercise. Remember, this isn't swung now. We're playing straight up, straight twos, right? You can start to swing it in there a little like I just started to do. But the point is to get out of this, if whether you're swinging it or not, is to really get that left hand. you got to forgive me. I have a really funky left hand. I have a familial tremor. 
which unfortunately it, it, it does affect my ability to actually do this. If I sit here and play it for like an hour, I'll get a lot better at it. I don't know if I relax or my amygdala or whatever the hell is. My brain finally is just like falls asleep and I sort of chill. But you, your basic drummer, even now, you'll be able to do this without your left hand going like. I'm serious. Sit down at your drums and do this. Playing time. Total song to that. I want another. You get the idea. Okay, later on you can bring in the. When you start doing the. What you're doing is you're shifting that grace note, which we're doing on the and here. Remember, this is one e and a three e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and. You know, you know what's bothering me? What's preventing me from doing this is there's a song that's in my head, an existing song, which is very helpful for this, and it's right on the end. Ah, I know what it is. Hey, Takamata, what do you say? Takamata, remember from History of the World, part one? Takamata, Takamata, talk. Aha, that's what, that's what I'm thinking. Okay, that is, again, that's not swung, that's straight, but that's giving your hand a lot of valuable expertise because the pattern it's playing, at least the number of notes and the manner in which they are, is the same as the shovel. Sh shuffle. I'm going to edit that little part out. Now that's the pure um, purdy, where you're hitting that grace note right after the snare. Where you're doing every one of those grace notes, as opposed in Rosanna, where um, Picaro, even though when he first demonstrates like the main beat, like what's the beat he? Uh, He doesn't really play that paradigm the whole time. But what Picaro does too is he occasionally will leave some of those grace notes out intentionally, just for the groove. And of course, Bonham only utilizes two of those grace notes in Fool in the Rain. Right? But in the straight up purdy, technically speaking, at least the academic one, the pedantic, would you say? You have it every time. See that? So then if you get that back from the triplet into the plain old 2-4-4-4, four, 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 no triplet happening within the groove. Now I'm going to show you something. A second ago in there, there was kind of a cool thing that I kind of did inadvertently because I started unconsciously thinking of it as musically. It was like... where eventually it will become, as Rob Brown said in his video, automatic, or even Purdy himself. He's like, hear that? That's just rebound. There ain't nothing to it. I think eventually as your skill level comes up, that's what it actually is or turns into, the very least a way to really think about it. It can become secondary. But until that happens with we drummers coming up, it's not secondary, and you got to tattoo it into your system. So I think you'll find this very helpful. In fact, I think this is an indispensable practice route method exercise to get your purdy shuffle not just physically up and running where the snare is going to you know your left hand or your weak hand if you're playing uh, left-handed on the drum kit and your right hand's doing the ghost notes you get used to the whole system you just get used to it but it's easier to understand because you know with the 16th we're just so used to right 
you know, as I've demonstrated a thousand times, you'll find this really, really helpful. The swing will be, be brought in later. In fact, I find that the... The Takamata, that's what we're going to call this. Hey, Takamata, what do you say? Oh, you do the things you do, but you shouldn't anyway. What did they say? Somebody put that in the comments below. Hey, Takamata, what do you say? God, I can't believe I can't remember. <laughs> but you get my idea. You get the idea. I mean, that's a good horn figure, right? A good horn pattern. Okay? Again, as I've said a thousand times, I, I know I repeat a lot. But that's how you get it. You repeat and you just keep doing it. You relax and you keep doing it. You keep doing it. More videos on the way. Remember, any emails you want to send me, bonzolium at gmail.com. I still have some t-shirts. Not many left of this design, okay? Got black ones and white ones. Not a lot of sizes left. You want them to do a new design on something. As soon as I get my act together, I'm almost totally healed up. So I'm getting there. I'm getting back in the groove of making videos. I got to tell you, that video I put up yesterday of me talking about the end of the song remains the same, I... As a huge Zeppelin fan, you get, you, I think you'd be lying to yourself if you say you don't love any backstage shots where they come off the stage, I'm talking about, and you see who the people are. Like, who's that wavy, gravy-looking dude that's in sort of a, like, a, he's got, like, a beret on, and he's got, like, a one-piece suit who's sort of lurking over by the Bearsville recording truck that's blue? And then there's another dude you'll see that comes out as the camera's backing up and you see Jimmy Page when he sort of looks back at our plant and some other dude that has the, the V-neck shirt, which I'll talk about. Oh, I already talked about in that video. Some dude sort of walks and I, <laughs> he walks and he stops, he sees the cameras and he turns real fast. Like, uh-oh, I don't know if he's like a low-level mobster or perhaps a seedy character. He looks like Biff from uh, Back to the Future, actually. But anyway, watch that over and over again. I have a link in the video I put out yesterday about the back, behind the scenes song remains the same. Anyway, I'm going to tell you, I know this is going to be helpful. Remember, start with the plain 16ths. Move that left hand or your weak hand to the snare. Go slow, practice. Your left hand will kind of get used to that. Then bring in the triplet, the shuffle proper. More videos on the way. Uh, George and I will be getting together next week, which will be a blast. Don't forget to check out PFOZ with George, Ivan, and Pete.